Good afternoon. Uh, this afternoon I'm going to be reading from James 1, 5 to 8 in the ESV. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Okay. Many people are quoting <clears throat> just that first verse, verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, will be given to him. And they leave out the rest of it. So what is that? <laughs> what is that do when they leave out the rest of it? It gives the impression that anybody who asks, you know, or anybody who professes the name of Jesus, if they just ask God, you know, he's going to give it to them. But that's not what it says. We have to ask in faith. Okay, what is faith? That means we believe God. You know, we're not just... We're not just testing God and saying, you know, what, what's your advice? And then deciding whether or not we want to take it or not. Now, some people believe that the Holy Spirit can't speak to us. You know, so how is he going to give us counsel if he can't speak to us? Now, I, I don't believe that the Lord speaks audibly to us. I don't, can't say for certain he's never spoken audibly to anybody after his death, uh, except for Paul, we know that that was an audible voice because other people heard it, and and Jesus said he was the one speaking. Uh, so I can't say that God has never, you know, that Jesus has not ever done that. But usually, uh, the voice is not audible. It is um, a voice inside our hearts, in our heads. Sometimes it's not even actual words. You know, it's just. Um, you know, we just we just know that this is what the Lord's saying to us. You know, um, you know, he, he might put a, a scripture in our minds. He might put a particular song in our minds, and the particular song lyrics could be, you know, a being a Christian song. You know, that that the song lyrics would would speak to our hearts and and give us the wisdom that we need. Um, but. Um, but the Holy Spirit does speak to us, you know, otherwise how are we going to know, you know, how are we going to know the wisdom we're supposed to have, you know, if he doesn't speak to us. Um, uh, and, and But he's, you know, he's going to speak to us through his word, yes, you know, but sometimes he speaks, he speaks through lots of different things. He speaks through babies, he speaks, you know, through children. I mean, you see the innocence of children, you know, a lot of times, and it speaks, it speaks to your heart. I mean, that's the Lord saying, be like that, you know, be, be that trusting and, and everything like that, you know, I mean, you know, just uh, not that, that not that God speaks through nature, so, but, but he does. I mean, that's what it says in Romans 1, that he, he, he reveals himself through his creative works, you know, we shouldn't worship nature, you know. Uh, but but we we see the glory of God through the things that He's made, you know, and um, He He can speak to us in so many different ways, you know, through our circumstances. I mean, He'll He'll speak to me lots of times through circumstances, you know. He'll give me uh, what, uh, parables, you know, just even through real life circumstances, and I could kind of list off of a bunch of them, but I'm, I don't want to go off on on a tangent here, you know, but. But we need to have hearts and minds that are open and, and listening to him speak on um to us. Uh, but the wisdom is, is going to be biblical wisdom. You know, it's not going to be anti-biblical is what I'm saying. You know, it's not going to be something against God or against his character or against his word. Um, that he's going to, you know, he's going to uh, give us wisdom and, and to know what to do. Um, uh so, but, but we need to ask in faith. We need to believe him. And, and, and again, not just throw it out there and say, okay, Lord, what do you think? <laughs> you know, and then decide whether you want to follow him or not. You know, if he's given you, especially clear biblical wisdom, you know, you know, we, we, we don't deny it. We don't ask him for it. And then just, 
walk away and do their own thing. And that's what this is talking about. So you can't just quote just the first verse and, and, and just give this blanket promise that if you ask God for wisdom, he's just going to give it to everybody, you know, just because they asked, you know. We have to ask in faith. We have to believe him and, and not have that approach that, you know, we'll maybe do it, maybe not do it, you know, um, and, and like that. So uh, we're, we're not to be doubting. We're to believe him for that wisdom. And then when he gives us that wisdom, we're just to follow that wisdom. We're to obey him. We're to do what he says and not say, oh, no, don't think so. Uh, it doesn't really sound like something I want to do. You know, maybe... Maybe you could suggest something else, you know, kind of a thing. That That's that's against what this is saying here. And then look what it says. It says, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. I don't know if you've lived near water before, near the ocean or anything like that, where you've seen a wave of the sea and, and, and as the wind is, is blowing it, you know, it can be pretty, pretty severe. But what, what do the waves do? What is a wave, you know? goes in and then it goes out right it goes in and goes out so i i look at it like a like a teeter-totter you, you know what a teeter-totter is it's it's one of those play things usually for kids though adults can do it too it's like a big long board kind of thing that sets on something like called a horse um and then you get one person on one end and one person on the other end and then they could go back and forth like this you know well, that's what this is talking about. Somebody who uh, was talking about they're, they're double-minded. And it means one time they're this way and another time they're this way. And they can go back and forth like that. And our power must be going out. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> it says Wi-Fi disconnected. <laughs> so um, I may not be able to send this right away. Uh, but anyway, this seems to be still recording. <laughs> uh, anyway, we're, we're not to be like that. You know, we're not supposed to be just going back and forth, you know, like, oh, yeah, yes, I'll follow you. No, I won't follow you. Uh, yes, yes, the gospel it does teach repentance and obedience. No, I don't think so. I think it's okay if I keep sinning, you know, and you know what I mean? You know, people who just vacillate back and forth and back and forth, you know, they're, they're undecided, you know, they, they profess faith in Jesus Christ, but they don't live the faith that they profess, um, because they're, they're double-minded. They don't stay with anything, uh, you know, even, you know, sometimes they'll profess strongly the, the truth of the gospel and then go right back to, you know, teaching the lies and, um, They'll, they'll, you know, profess that they're going to live this way and then they live the other way, you know. So um, that's what he's saying here is if if we pray and we ask God for wisdom, you know, but we don't we don't believe him for the wisdom to give us or we won't accept the wisdom that he gives us that we're we're like that. We're like that person on a teeter totter just going back and forth and back and forth. Um, for that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord, for he is double-minded. And I have this definition I had written before about double-minded. Double-minded means to be of two minds and souls, and to be wavering and vacillated between two opinions. It is like a person split in half, kind of like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, one person but split personalities. It is a lot like someone who professes faith in Jesus Christ, but who lives like hell still walking in deliberate and habitual sin without regard for the Lord and for his commands under the new covenant. He professes one thing, but lives the opposite. Okay. So, um, if we don't have faith and we profess faith, but we don't live in that faith, we're double-minded because we're professing one thing with our lips, but we're living the opposite. Or if we just vacillate back and forth between opinions and when one moment we're supposedly for God and the next minute we're not, you know, or, you know, one minute we're saying, yes, I need to repent and blah, 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 you know, but the next minute, eh, no, I think I'll look at some porn, you know, I think I'll, 
I think I'll go do something that I shouldn't do and I know I shouldn't do, you know, and, and, um, and then they make excuses for why they do it. And, and, and then they just keep going back and forth and back and forth and they never, never settle on anything. They're unstable in all their ways. They, they, they never take a stand and just stay there. You know, and so really, they never really take a stand because the stand is not sincere because as soon as they take one, then they just go back to the opposite one. You know, there's a lot of people like that. And maybe, you know, some people like that. And uh, it's really sad, you know, because these people, they're not going to go to heaven. They're going to go to hell. See what it says? They will not receive anything from the Lord. Nothing. Swat. You know, and the Bible is real clear on that, you know, that if we walk according to the flesh, the sin is what we practice, righteousness, godliness, holiness, obedience to our Lord is not what we practice. We do not have eternal life with God. We will die. We will go to hell. No matter how many people are telling us, oh, you're going to heaven because you profess faith in Jesus Christ, you know. So take take God in his, in his word seriously. Um, If you want scriptures, I would be glad to supply them for you. That's hey, what I just said. Uh, read Romans 6, Romans 8. Read 1 John 1, 2, and 3. Uh, read Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Luke 9, 23 to 26. You know, um, Galatians 5, 16 to 21. Ephesians 5, 3 to 6. Galatians 6, 7 to 8. You know, all of those, you know, support what I've just, you know, said to you. Uh, so, so be somebody who is who you are all the time, no matter who you're with. Be sincere, be honest, show integrity, take a stand, stay there, walk there. Don't vacillate. Don't get on the teeter-totter. Don't go back and forth and back and forth. Don't be like oh, oh, the, the wave, you know, tossed by the wind. And it talks about that actually also in um, Ephesians 4. You know, it's talking about... Um, uh, people who are, um, so, so the, 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 peop, the Christians would not be tossed back and forth like that by, by people who are uh, deceitful and they're scheming and they're teaching them, you know, lies. Uh, and that's why we need to speak the truth and love to one another, it says, so that we will not be tossed back and forth like that. But we'll, 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 <laughs> We'll stand on, on the truth and we'll stay there and we won't vacillate, you know. And this is how we all need to supposed to live, okay?